Now we can see how cellular technology has evolved through years. And normally we will call different different versions of the cellular technology as different generations. And this generations we will start with first generation that is on G. And now the research is going on for fifth generation that is 5G. And these generations are defined based on the standards given by ITU. ITU is International Telecommunication Union. And it is a specialized agency of United Nations organization. So this is an international body which is standardizing the cellular services and technologies. So they have come up with different standards that define different generations. That is for, for a cellular technology to confirm to a particular generation, it should adhere to the standards. Standards in the terms of connections and standards in the terms of voice debt set up by this organization. So if there is any uh, particular shift in the technology that enables any advanced features, we will usually call it as the next generation. For example, from 1G, 1G to 2G, the change was from analog technology to digital technology. So the systems which we are using, analog systems and analog systems constitute under the first generation cellular phones. And when the digital signal started, it came as a different standard, that is 2G. So in this first generation, the signals we used were analog, analog signals and the systems which controlled it was also analog. So later, digital control for the analog signals evolved. So we were able to digitally control the analog signals and these analog signals were used, to, used for transmission. And that time, the handsets were very bulky and the this area coverage also, that is distance of communication was also less. And different uh, technologies evolved, different standards evolved. First the standards evolved region wise, especially in Europe and later it was uh, interpolated to cover the global standards. That came with the second generation when we digitalized the signals, we were able to compress the data digitalize plus compression gave very good uh, like good uh, boost to this technology when we are able to digitalize the data plus compressing it we were able to transmit more data through the carriers right so this has revolutionized the technology and this technology we will normally call as gsm GSM stands for Global System for Mo Mobile Communication and it aims for worldwide compatibility for voice communication. That is, the person who is using GSM phones with the same phone, he will be able to communicate in any region on the earth. So, the service provider should adhere to the certain standards so that compatibility for the voice communication uh, is available all over the world. And these are the technologies involved in GSM. Compression is done using certain algorithms called codex. Codex stands for compression, decompression. So using these algorithms, we are able to compress data. And the, this GSM used, supported only circuit data. That is the data which is passing to the normal circuit. Circuit will be established between the caller and the receiver. So there will be dedicated connection established as long as there is a communication link is, uh, between these two devices. So if any data can be transferred to this circuit, this is called circuit and uh, this GSM technologies was able to support such data. So this data included fax, SMS. So in this mobile phones, we are able to have voice communication and also get a short message service also, SMS. You will remember, SMS was, SMS was a sensation that time, short message services. And, uh, but our internet works in a different way, right? Internet works in a way where we transfer the data through packets, right? 
packets and using IP address that is how internet data transfer is okay okay but this second generation was not compatible with this packet data uh, so there was no compatibility between the internet and the mobile communication and another technology which parallelly evolved with the GSM is the CDMA technology CDMA technology ways so it uses a different concept for communication transmission of signals through the carriers it is called division multipliers which is assigning different carrier frequency to users according to the predefined codes and so this came uh, came us to parallel technology there is no interoperability interoperability between these two technologies if one person is having gsm handset he will be able to change the gsm service providers he will be able to change the sim but he will not be able to get the cdma like cdma sim in this gsm he can't use cdma sim cdma will be supported by another device different set of hardware different set of infrastructures so there was no interoperability between these two technologies uh, so these two technologies evolved like parallel technologies and we saw the adaptation of these two technologies were different according to the regions in india gsm was adopted more popular and uh, in america cdma become more popular uh, we saw that the cdma technology has certain technological uh, technological advantages over the gsm even though it was technologically advantages over but gsm was adopted more in india the reason could be uh, this interoperability we, we had more gsm operators at that time so we had only reliance or tato docomo in cdma and here the people give preference to handset right first they will buy the handset and uh, then they will try to put sim inside it so if they buy gsm handset they are not able to put C cdma sims right so cdma usually come up with a operator made handsets because it needs special infrastructure so it was sub supplied along with the sim so that uh, that option did not went well with indian people and uh, relation with more european standards and uh, gsm was evolved in europe so that we got accustomed to gsm technologies more than the cdma technologies and that is the uh, story of these two technologies and in this 2g there came different advancements so before going to 3g so 3g is the standard defined by itu so even though these developments did not match the 3g standards they are advancement over the original 2g so the manufacturers or the service providers try, like to call them by different names for example 2.5g 2.7 by uh, 75g but it are only for commercial purpose but standard wise purpose there is no standards like 2.5g and 2.75g it then, then next standard is the 3g and in 2.5g the advancement was in data communication so here on technology evolved like GPRS. GPRS stands for General Packet Radio Service. So we were able to get this packet data also in the cellular connection. That means we are able to get internet connectivity also in the mobile phones. So in other words, mobile uh, communication we are able to support packet data also other than the circuit data. So we were able to get multimedia services that is MMS. We are able to read email in our phones we were able to assess worldwide web in our phones due to this technology and this technology when we are using if we have observed our cell phone near the signal we will find a symbol g right symbol g means it is using gprs technology that is data communication is happening and this uh, data communication was rather very slow 56 to 195 kbps data was supported and again advancement came which helped to enhance this data so the next uh, uh, next advancement came with edge technology so edge is otherwise called as enhanced data rates for gsm evolution or edge so this edge help to increase the data rate so data rate has increased up to 170 kbps 
and this edge led to the next generation. So, this edge technology is compatible with both 2G and 3G also. And this when we are using this technology, it will be indicated by symbol E near our cell signal. If you observe in the cell where it is showing the signal strength, if we are seeing E, it means that it is using edge technology. So, in generally, when we are telling that we are using 2G GSM phones, we are using these two technologies, that is GPRS technology and edge technology for the data communication. For engineering services, general studies video lectures, visit www.iesgeneralstudies.com. For mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion, visit www.getnet.com.